Their plan is just a recipe for disaster. All under arrest for trespassing. There will be jobs. It will be safe. It will be good for the community. Well, at stake in general is for life. There's no 100% guarantees. itself is unique because of its depth. At its deepest point is over 600 feet deep. I believe the native people had a name for it that meant Restless Lake. Since I was a young kid, I, I was into stories of Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot and cryptozoology and those kind of mysterious things. When I found out there was a lake monster right here in the lake where I lived, I was like, I, I, and now I gotta know more. The stories go back to the native people who lived in the area. These mysteries come from down inside of the lake. The lake monster comes up and surfaces. And now this plan is to take something that isn't naturally there and place it down at the bottom of the lake. There's basically two types of mine to mine this salt. One is to actually excavate through tunnels and bringing that up to the land surface through a shaft. Then the other type of mining is called solution mining. You drill a well down to the salt formation and then they would inject fresh water into there, dissolving the salt and then pumping the brine back up. And so what you end up with is a void. So the idea is to use that to store either natural gas, methane, or propane. Every morning from our farm, we can see what we call the dragon. The mist that is on the lake, it gradually rises up and it looks like, because of the shape of the lakes, which is long, um, it rises up and it looks like a big white dragon hovering up over the landscape. Out here, it, it doesn't seem very different from 20 years ago. <laughs> this whole area, is unique because it's still very rural. One of the things that I think we were most attracted to in farming is the idea of being able to take care of this place. That feels like a good legacy to leave for our little piece of the world. And so any threat to that is a threat to the life we have. Prestwood is the company that has been wanting to store propane liquid under pressure, and that feels like a very risky thing to do. Biggest concern, I guess, is the salinization of Seneca Lake, that the cavern would break in some way under pressure and allow salt to start leaking into the lake. And once it's leaking in, that would change the whole ecosystem, everything, everything from bottom up. It would be a dead lake is basically what you would end up with. This is a public meeting venue. The supervisor is an elected employee of the people. So he can't tell his boss that they can't bring up issues. And right. Crestwood owns the salt plant. Right. And so I think they got a base of constituents who are advocating for this project. You know, that's a, the salt plant's a 100-year-old business. And uh, a lot of intergenerational families have worked there. And there's a lot of loyalty in this community to the salt plant, yeah. you know. 
but it's going to be too late when something happens, and this is an existential threat to our way of life. Lost my job back in 2001. You know, my dad worked at the plant, so I said, why not? You know, so I went down and filled an application. You know, I've got my community down at work. It definitely brings us together because we're there for so much with each other. It's deep-rooted without a question. I mean, a lot of people have worked there or know somebody that works there or have relatives that work there. It's, it's definitely a uh, community-driven plant. We're a union shop. So the United Steel Workers, I was president from 2012 to 2015. If the steel workers had a problem, they would never put their name on it. They pride themselves on sending their people home safe every night. People don't see it that way, though. They always look for the worst. Just because they tell me something doesn't mean it's true. You know, there's a monster under my bed. Well, no, there's not. There are about a hundred caverns that could be developed for gas storage if they really tried to do it. And none of them are wholly within salt, so they, they are somewhat leaky almost by definition because they're embedded salt. food and it's used for medical purposes, etc. But this lake is presently at 80 parts per million sodium, four times more concentrated with sodium than what newborns and, and people with high blood pressure should be drinking. So there, there are already some adverse effects for the 100,000 or more people who live around this lake who are drinking lake water. What's the worst case if their brine pond ruptures? Personally, I think it, it could be quite catastrophic. All aquatic life within two or three kilometers would be killed. To have a, a dead zone in a lake measured in kilometers, you know, is, it seems unprecedented. I can't emphasize enough that this storage facility will not hurt the lake. These caverns proposed for LPG storage are holding brine today. We know they do not leak. You know, we have years of testing and monitoring that repeatedly show these particular caverns have integrity. The bedded salt is one type of, of salt formation. Here it's something that we're readily familiar with because we've been in that part of New York for a while. And there's no evidence that this project will impact Seneca Lake. And this adds, you know, 88 plus million gallons of propane to a market that every winter you tend to find a situation where you can't get the propane to where it's needed the most, when it's needed the most. There are some rural areas where everyone's leaving, but that's not true here. A lot of people lived here all their lives and it's not disposable. You know, I live right here on this lake and I couldn't stand by without doing something. Oh, yeah. So tomorrow, there's at least 25 signed up to be arrested. They put banners and then we stand behind the banners and beyond the no trespassing signs. I think I didn't start out strong, I started out adventurous. And then that leads you into a lot of trouble. Then you gain strength from all that. I want my children to learn that you can do this. And it's a, it feels like an example to them and to the grandchildren. This is what you all are gonna have to do. Welcome everyone. When you arrive at the North Gate, look for a row of trespass signs. 
anyone who steps over that line toward the lake is risking arrest. Why wouldn't you support it if you're going to bring a few more people to, to work, you know, to actually get jobs? It's not even here yet. It, this is a lot of what if, you know, the things that they bring up are, well, this might happen. What if this? What if that? The way I look at it is what will happen? There will be jobs. It will be safe. It'll be good for the community. Maybe. Might work. Seneca Nessie, they call it. Oh, there's like a huge story about it. That's funny. From back in the, the early, yeah, in the eight, late 1800s. Captain Henry said that he would ram the creature and take it alive if possible, otherwise he would kill it, either take it aboard or tow it to Geneva. As soon as the body of the monster struck the water, it began to sink and disappeared. I don't disagree with it. I just don't believe it until I actually see it. There are myths that are very common, like when I talk to people about you know, what I'm doing. One myth is everything's fine, there is no problem. And since we are lucky enough in this area to have a source of clean water, it's just unthinkable that we would put that at risk in any way. This is from the story of The Lake Gun by James Fenimore Cooper. The lake seems to be speaking to the surrounding hills, which send back the echoes of its voice in accurate reply. Seneca was the simple answer. The word was uttered in a tone so low and melancholy that it sounded like saddened music. Nothing that Fuller had ever before heard conveyed so much meaning so simply and in so few syllables. It illuminated the long vista of the past and cast a gloomy shadow into that of the future. 